Uh, it's great to be here. So uh, I only have 20 minutes to present, but I want to talk about where Flash is going because, as everybody knows, uh, over the last few years, it's been pretty tumultuous for Flash. A lot of misconceptions, um, and I just want to give, give some idea of where we're going with Flash, particularly around gaming. So uh, I'll be around for a little bit afterwards, but if you want to get a hold of me, usually Twitter is the best way nowadays. Uh, it's just at Lee Brumlow is my Twitter handle. Uh, you can email me, it's just my last name at adobe.com, but Twitter seems to be uh, where I do most of my communicating uh, nowadays, which is a little strange. So I want to talk first about some common misperceptions surrounding Flash, and there are many. So first is you can't target iOS with Flash. Now half of that is, is true, right? As most people know, Flash doesn't run in the browser on iOS devices. And in fact, we, we're stopping developing the mobile browser plugin altogether because what's the point if you can't target iOS, right? But you can use Flash to create applications and games for iOS using Adobe Air. And uh, I'll, I'll walk through some examples of, of this workflow and how they've been really successful. So another one that kind of uh, grew uh, was that Windows 8 Metro was not going to support the Flash player. So that's not correct. What happened was the Internet Explorer team made a blog post about how they wanted IE to be completely plug-in free. Well, uh, that's only one team at Microsoft, basically. I think the Windows team said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. So all these people are going to go buy their new Windows 8 laptop and then they can't play their Facebook games. You know, I don't think that's really going to fly. So both IE and Chrome will have Flash built in to the browsers in Windows 8 Metro mode. So the other one is everybody is moving towards HTML5 for games. So now there definitely is a lot of movement in this space and in fact Adobe is now uh, doing a lot of stuff surrounding HTML5. Um, but the reality is, you know, big companies like Rovio and Zynga are, are investing heavily into Flash. Um, and I'll, again, I'll show you some examples of that. The, another misconception is, especially among kind of hardcore game developers, is that Flash is only good for simple games. Um, you know, and, and it is. That's kind of been, you know, where Flash started. You know, all of these kind of really nice, simple, casual games. But we also are putting features into Flash that enable console quality games on the web. And in fact, Epic recently ported Unreal Tournament 3 to run inside of the Flash player. And this was a, a, just a demo. You can't go and play it uh, online. Um, but it shows the power the Flash player has now to deliver not just simple, casual games, but also console quality 3D games. So again, I'm going to uh, skip over this a little bit, but we definitely see HTML5 increasing in, in importance when it comes to games. Um, and Adobe is kind of working both sides of this. Uh, and you know, if HTML5 uh, continues along, like let's say everybody ends up supporting WebGL, then you're going to see us also targeting HTML5 with our tools and services. So the current state of HTML5 um, some good news, definitely, is that Google Chrome is now the number one browser in the world, which if, you, if you've ever done any web development, this probably makes you pretty happy. Um, but just in general for HTML5, this is a good thing. So Adobe's doing a lot around HTML5, and in fact, you may hear us now talking more about HTML5 than, than we do about Flash. But we're doing a lot of work for uh, to actually put in a lot of rich features directly into the browser. So we're doing a lot of uh, contributions to WebKit and things like that. And we're also creating a set of tools uh, to, to essentially allow you to create all that rich expressive content in HTML5. So with that being said, uh, when it comes to, to Flash and, and you know, a lot of people, if you, if you listen to the tech news, oh, Flash is dying, it's, you know, it's irrelevant now. Well, this is a very recent uh, post by uh, Google on their Chromium blog. Basically, the point of this post was saying how plug-in use is declining pretty steadily. 
except for Flash and PDF. And they basically did this test and essentially in this 28 day window, 99.9% .9 of people using Chrome actually were using Flash. So uh, that's why Flash is actually bundled directly into Chrome. It doesn't behave like a plugin. It's actually a part of the browser. Um, so it's complete misconception that Flash use is actually declining. It's not. So two areas that Flash clearly still dominates on the web is video and gaming. And these are the two areas that we're really focusing on for Flash moving forward. Um, you know, because a lot of the, the, the old uses of Flash, you can do a lot of that stuff in HTML5 now. Um, so these two areas, though, we see being really important for Flash. So we now have an actual gaming team at Adobe, and we're really putting resources specifically into gaming. If you want to find out the whole thing with, with uh, you know, what we're doing surrounding the technology, showcase of really, uh, really like, uh, successful games, you can go to gaming.adobe.com, which is a, a new microsite that we created. So why Flash for Games? Um, a big one is consistency and reach. If you're a gaming company, you want to get your game in front of as many people as possible. Yes, you can do some really cool demos in HTML5, um, but you're confronted with the, with the reality of, okay, how many people are actually going to be able to play this out in the real world? Um, so Flash is still the dominant uh, player when it comes to getting your game in front of the most possible people. So some new numbers surround, or some new technology that we have uh, with Flash. So approximately four weeks ago, we released Flash Player 11.2. And this contained a new silent auto update feature, which is very similar to Chrome, how like you wake up in the, like one morning, Chrome is totally different. You never, it never asks you to update Chrome. It just did it in the background silently. So we have that feature now for Flash Player. So since then, over 200 million people have opted into receiving those silent background updates because nobody wants to be bothered by, you know, please update your Flash Player kind of stuff. So this means we can push out new features and new versions of the, of the player to all those 200 million people in less than 24 hours. So no longer do we have to wait for people to update their Flash players, which would you know, usually take about a year for us to get really good penetration. We can now instantly push stuff out to those people. So this is huge. So what's the, the most important uh, place on the web for games? It's obviously Facebook. Um, and Flash rules Facebook games. So 24 of the top 25 games on Facebook are built in Flash. Um, and like I said, this is not going to decline. In fact, uh, major companies like Rovio, Zynga uh, are, are not just currently delivering in Flash, but they're also heavily investing in, in the future of Flash and working with us. Yeah, and here's just some of the examples of game companies that are, are deploying their games uh, to the web with Flash, so just a sampling. So I, I just want to talk really quickly about Apple and Flash. So this was, you know, still is an, an area that a lot of people are confused about. So you, everybody I'm sure remembers the brouhaha, you know, between Apple and Adobe, like it, it transcended even tech news. It was like mainstream, uh, you know, it was like what we call it a soap opera. Uh, and the whole thing was about Flash in the, in the mobile browser on iOS. So um, that doesn't work. So you can't go to your in mobile Safari and, and, and view Flash content. But what you can do is to create your game in Flash and export it for, as an iOS application or an Android application or, or any of the mobile platforms. And really, this is all that really matters because while people are saying that, yeah, web-based web gaming on mobile devices is the next thing, well, maybe it is, but it currently isn't at all. I don't know anybody who plays games in the mobile browser. Everybody plays games as apps. So that's really the most important area for Flash to be in. And this just highlights that not only is Apple accepting games and applications that are built in Flash, but they're also featuring them uh, you know, prominently in their app store. So there is no conflict uh, in that sense between Apple and Flash. So I want to talk about a couple of, uh, or, or kind of where we're going with our Flash tooling. So in Flash CS6, 
Uh, we now have built-in uh, sprite sheet support. And this is gen uh, generally where we're moving the Flash tooling towards is not being so concerned about the export format. So, you know, like as a game developer, I'm probably, or, or you know, my, my animators or designers probably going to want to work in Flash to do like, let's say, character animation. But maybe the end game is going to run as a native game or, you know, uh, in HTML5. So we're going to be adding new export capabilities to different platforms. And the sprite sheet support in here, obviously the data formats are not specific to Flash. Uh, they range through all different technologies. We also have an HTML5 exporter. So this allows you to do your timeline animation in Flash like, like your animators might be doing and actually, actually convert those into HTML5 canvas. Uh, this uses a technology called CreateJS. Um, and this actually will go through the vectors on the timeline and convert those into HTML5 canvas drawing calls. So again, this is where we're kind of heading with this is we don't really care if you run it in, a, in an SWF file or as in HTML5 or, or whatever. It's the workflow and the tools of Flash what is what people really like. So our two latest runtimes that are actually fully released, Flash Player 11.3, Adobe Air 3.3, And I just want to mention uh, some of the things we're working on for uh, the next version of Flash. So one of the big things is action script workers or multi-threading. This is something that Flash uh, didn't have support for at all from a developer perspective. Hugely important for games. Uh, and you can actually start playing with this already on the Adobe Lab site. You can get the beta of 11.4. Support for advanced profiling using a, a new tool called Monocle. And this is a complete game changer for Flash um, because this allows you to profile your Flash content in the, in the release player that everybody else has. You don't have to do a debug build and stuff like that because debug builds, were no, you know, they're notoriously slow because we add all this crap into the Swift to allow you to debug it. This allows you to actually test it in the, in the, uh, you know, in the release version of the player. We're going to be creating a new virtual machine for, for the Flash player, uh, doing some significant updates to the ActionScript language itself. Um, you know, AS, ActionScript 3 is, is a really nice language, but uh, you know, our hardcore developers are like, oh, we want private constructors, method overloading stuff like that, so we're going to be starting to add things like that into the language. And just making the ActionScript language faster, because it used to be that the slow part of Flash was the rendering, because essentially we did all of our rendering and software on the CPU. Now you can do it all on the GPU, so now the slowest part of Flash is actually the ActionScript language itself, so that's where we're really spending a lot of time to, to speed up the performance of ActionScript and adding some more advanced gaming features. So I don't have time to actually demo Monocle today, but this is what it actually looks like. And this is a, a 3D uh, scene that you're seeing here. I can look at all of, the, all of the draw calls that are being done to the GPU. I can actually step through the creation of this scene, um, get very specific information about all of, all of the frames and, and certain areas that I need to look at. So. Um, Again, in, you know, uh, in really advanced gaming tools, you have this type of stuff, but Flash has never had anything this robust for profiling your content. So the, well, undoubtedly the biggest new feature in Flash that's, that's in, in like the last five years is Stage 3D. And like I mentioned before, Flash used to be pretty much all CPU rendered which isn't going to work if you want to do a 3D game. I mean, people did amazing things with it. But now with Stage 3D, it's essentially a subset of OpenGL in the Flash player where you can run everything on the GPU. So you, uh, I'm sure many of you in here just saw the last presentation uh, with Unity. So Adobe has actually partnered with Unity um, because uh, you know we're not going to build a 3D gaming tool like Unity. Adobe has no plans on building something like that. Um, because it probably, let's face it, it wouldn't be as good as Unity. We don't, we don't have that type of expertise. So it's better for us to partner with what, you know, what is one of the best tools out there. So Unity has actually developed a Flash export feature 
And I want to show you really quick uh, what that looks like. Well, I'll show you the, the result of what that looks like. So when you download Unity, you get, um, it comes with a sample game for you, for you to be able to, to, uh, to see how it was built and stuff like that. Um, and it's called Angry Bots. And here's that game, and this is running inside a Flash player now using that export feature. And this is all running on the GPU. So, and, you know, and this, again, this, this is not like an Alienware 50 pound laptop. This is just a regular MacBook Pro uh, running this, and it's completely smooth. So, this is, you know, a lot of console game companies, uh, they're seeing their revenue kind of decline a little bit because where, where is everybody playing games now? It's on, the, on your mobile devices and on Facebook. So, the idea is that. In the future, these types of games are going to be embedded right inside of Facebook, and you can, you know, all you and all of your friends can be in here playing these kind of console quality games directly in the web. So another uh, area, uh, so just to back up, that Unity feature is actually currently in there. If you download the Unity tool today, I'm not sure if it's out of beta yet, but it's definitely in there for you to check out. Now, Epic is also working on an exporter for Flash. Obviously, they have the UDK development tool. Um, and uh, let me see if I can get internet here. Does this work? Yes, it does. Okay. Okay. So if you want to look at this demo yourself, you can actually go to unrealengine.com forward slash flash. There we go. So this is their Epic Citadel demo that they've actually Oh, and that's not very promising. I, th I thought I had it cached, but uh, maybe I don't. Well, anyway, the, the best thing to do to look at this demo is to look at it on your own machine. That way, you know, because people think, oh, he probably has some souped up machine, probably runs like crap. Look at it on your own computer and, and, and judge for yourself. But um, this is essentially, it, I'm sure many people have seen the Epic Citadel demo. Uh, they made it initially for the iPad. Um, console quality, uh, 60 frames per second running in the Flash player. So definitely check this out on your own machine. Um, well, it's so close. How much time do we have left? All right, well, let me go back to the slides. So uh, when it comes to frameworks, those are two big game frameworks, but there's a lot of community-based frameworks, and one of the best is called Away3D. And Adobe is now officially working with Away3D. We're helping to fund its development. Uh, so we're really starting to, to change our workflow of us trying to do everything ourselves in-house to supporting open source projects, which, which are, you know, have awesome uh, projects that are being created. So we're instead trying to fund those projects. So what about 2D really quickly? Uh, you know, every, all the demos usually are these really cool 3D first person shooters, but what are, what are the most profitable games out there? Uh, it's, a lot of it is these 2D casual games which Flash is really, really well suited for. So another open source project that we're supporting is called Starling, and this is essentially a way to tap into the GPU with Flash using a very similar API to what Flash developers are already used to using. So star some games that are already out there that have been built in Starling on Facebook, uh, Zynga just released Ruby Blast, which is, again, Flash-based, built in Starling, and Angry Birds on Facebook is actually built using the Starling framework. So it has some, you know, and that's like, I don't know how many, 20 million users, and, you know, so, uh, it's definitely a good use case for, for Starling. 
So let me see if this is actually loaded. That looks like it is. So my, my resolution here is a little, is obviously a little small. So here's the Epic Citadel demo. So they, uh, Epic has also, we, we demoed this at our big developer conference, they've ported the entire Unreal Tournament 3 to run inside of the Flash player, um, and it runs beautifully. Um, and again, uh, these big game companies are, are expecting the next wave or the next future thing is you're going to be able to go to Facebook and, and to play these kind of console quality experiences uh, that you used to have to, you used to only be able to do on a gaming console. Um, so definitely check this out yourself again on your own machines uh, just to see how well it actually performs. Um, and yeah, so with that I can take some questions. I was going to do some, some mobile demos, but um, probably don't have time for that. There's a lot of, of really good games that are on uh, iOS and Android that have been built with Flash. Um, and a lot of uh, high profile games are going to be coming out fairly soon. Uh, so yeah, so in general, the key takeaway from this talk is Adobe is l like laser focused on gaming now for Flash. That's where we see the real use case for Flash moving forward, um, and that's where we're investing heavily. So, any questions about anything? Yep. Are there any plans to uh, change the Flash authoring tool so that you can export content from there natively into Starling? Because the current hangup we have yep. right now is to use Starling revolves a lot of programmer input to basically script all that stuff out. Yep, so the, that is absolutely the, the number one requested thing uh, from people right now is, uh, oh sure, Starling is great, but you have to do everything in code. You can't use the Flash authoring tool. So that's something we're definitely working on. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard of a tool called Spriter. It was a, it's like a Kickstarter project. It has a really nice way to animate things because sprite sheets are not the answer for a lot of games as well. Like if you need a customizable character with different clothes, like you can't have sprite sheets for that. So we are looking at ways for Flash Pro to be able to do animations for GPU-based games like with Starling. So yeah, so it's definitely the number one requested thing of us is, is uh, so we're, we are working on that. We have time for one more question if anybody has anything. Well, okay, well, thanks. Uh, thanks, if, I appreciate it. If anybody it. has questions, they want to speak to them uh, afterwards. Yeah, I'll be in the step back. Step outside in the back. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. Appreciate it.